Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Players Prep. I am your host, Brad Hopkins, alongside Jared Morris and Maurice Patton. We are brought to you by Global Motorsports. GlobalMotorsportsInc.com is how you can find them. They've got five locations throughout the Middle Tennessee area. So stop in and see them today because they've got tremendous cars, a tremendous selection, and they're a quality, quality company. And that's why we use them as well. So, fellas, we talked last week. A couple of good coaches, Will Hester, Brian Rector, some pretty good programs, but someone's got to fall. The Battle of Two Undefeated, Ravenwood comes out victorious. I mean, were you surprised, Maurice? Wasn't necessarily surprised that Ravenwood won. Was surprised by the way it went, 24 yeah. nothing. Um, I, I I did not see that coming. And um, Ravenwood and Will Hester has talked about their defense all year, and obviously they showed up Friday night. Yeah, but we were talking with the guys, you know, during the week yesterday, uh, last week, uh, Jared, about you know just how tough contest is going to be for both clubs. But obviously, it's I wouldn't say one team had more focus than the other. But when every time, like Maury said, you can put up twenty four points and stop the other team from scoring, that's a pretty big day. Absolutely, as a defensive player, uh, a goose egg is what you're always aiming for. And when you can have three interceptions along with that and a blocked punt on special teams, it's hard not to win the game when you have something like that happen. And uh, like Mo said, defense wins championships, and they showed that last Friday night. Maurice, listen to this quote real quick. This is from Seth Rowland, the guy that pretty much shouldered the, the workload for uh, you know, the Raptors. He said, hey, look, I knew deep down we had this game. Guy had 151 yards and a touchdown. It's pretty impressive. Seth is a very, very confident young man, quietly confident. I've mm -hmm. um, known him for a pretty good while, super kid. I was glad to see him have a big game um, the other night. Um, I think it was his birthday, actually. So, um, so yeah, yeah, big night on his birthday. But, um, you know, Everybody talks when they talk about Ravenwood's offense. They talk about Van Jefferson for obvious reasons. Kids, a Georgia yeah. commitment, um, hmm. top-rated receiver in the state. Um, but but Seth and Chris have really done a great job of of taking some of the offensive load off of Van and making defenses have to play him a little bit more straight up. And like you said, 151 yards and a touchdown the other night. Um, Jared mentioned the block kick. That kid, Jeb Stewart. I don't know how many kicks he's blocked over the last couple of years, but yeah. I, I was at the Franklin Ravenwood game last year, and I think he blocked two. So, wow. so he's got a nose for for making that play in that situation. So, again, not a great shock that Ravenwood won it, but but the way they did it, putting up the goose egg, shutting down a couple of pretty good offensive players in Emmanuel Hall and Deion Sanders, really impressive. Going down Absolutely. south to Chattanooga area, we talked last week uh, about the uh, Macaulay Baylor matchup. Mm -hmm. Even though that's not necessarily any sort of, you know, real implications here in the middle, you know, where we are in our region, it's still a great ball game between two great clubs. I was actually a little bit surprised at that ball game. I I wouldn't say the offensive output from Macaulay was an out was a surprise to me, but just the way that you know they played against Baylor was a surprise a little bit to me. You know, um, Javon Craig, the quarterback for Macaulay. I got to see him last year at Brentwood Academy, and I had heard some good things about him. And you saw it in glimpses. It looks like this year he's putting it together consistently, and he's um, become one of the top recruits in that area. I think he got an offer over the weekend from Tennessee Chattanooga, and it won't be his last. Absolutely. And uh, another guy huge for Macaulay, Trotter, the yeah, running back. Trotter. 30 carries, 244 yards, three touchdowns, outgained Baylor by himself. Literally had more yards himself than Baylor did on offense. So that was another huge performance by him this year. And like you said, a very high-powered offense. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I think that they were saying that uh, they were tweaking things from a blocking schematic just because of Baylor's unique style of defense. Mm -hmm. and, Whatever they were trying, obviously, that it worked. didn't work to keep the guy. <laughs> the tweaks um, worked, no apparently, kidding. huh? You mentioned the 244 yards that he had on the ground. Uh, they had 263 in total. So you yeah. <laughs> to say that he was pretty much shouldering that load uh, was an understatement. Uh, any other performances, guys, from any individuals that you saw during the week that need mentioning? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, before I give my pace setter, of course, go to the Facebook page. Like us on Facebook, Players Prep. Follow me, 97 Morse. We got BHOP72 and Mo Patton Sports over here, so follow us on Twitter. Put anything on the Facebook page you like, photos, videos, questions that we can answer, anything like that, just let us know. My pace setter for the week is going to be Michael Eddings from Shelbyville Central. Guy had 219 yards on 29 carries and five touchdowns in the win for Shelbyville Central. So he's my pace setter this week, guys. You got a pace setter? I do. I'm going to have to stick with Seth Rowland, man. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I know we, we, we talked to other coaches, and you know, obviously it's, it's cool to talk with kids or about kids that are kind of close in the area, but 
anytime you can consistently put up the numbers that he's put up and then talk about it afterwards so convincingly, you know, you got to give him at least a little bit of credit. So mm -hmm. he's my pace setter. You know, there were, there were some awfully good performances out there this weekend. Um, the kid at Beach, Roderick Nap Nap Napper, mm -hmm. N-A-P-P-E-R, mm -hmm. Napper. Um, 34 carries, 288 yards, four touchdowns, and they needed them all in a 34-30 win over at Mount Juliet. Um, also, Darius Moorhead from Ensworth, big night, mm. 260 yards and five oh, carries yeah. in that overtime win against MBA. So, um, some guys toting that rock. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, um, that was uh, I was at that game, Ensworth. Uh, I uh, bet you were. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I was. Uh, yeah, <laughs> number one sons uh, had some pretty good catches in that game, and, and uh, actually, it was it was a struggle. Um, uh, just to see uh, Father Ryan, excuse me, um, uh, NBA. NBA? NBA come back like they did. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. um, that game was pretty convincingly in the hands of the Tigers. And then the way they scratched and clawed their way back into it, taking it to overtime. Those you know? guys do not quit and they do no. not go away. I saw them a couple of weeks ago against uh, down at Brentwood Academy in that 52-44 game. And, and they, they can put up points and they can put them up quick. And when you come up, and you try to focus on stopping Ty Chandler, then then Cole Uverard will either break the pocket or he'll mm -hmm. um, he'll find Austin Rolfe. They've got some weapons on offense, and you saw all of them the other night. I Absolutely. Imagine. Now, we've got another great game to talk about here uh, coming up when we come back. So we thought we'd grab Cody White, the head coach from the Brentwood Academy Eagles, to talk about his upcoming game against McCauley. And the interesting thing is, NBA was the only team to beat Brentwood Academy this year. And McCall, we've seen them just pretty much running through their schedule. So it's going to be pretty exciting to see these two teams matched up. And we're going to have a conversation with Cody White when we return. So this is Players Prep brought to you by Global Motorsports. Stop by and see them online at globalmotorsportsinc.com. And you can also, like Jared and, and Maurice said, follow us on Facebook and things of that nature. So stick around. Cody White will be up next when we return. Tocopolis programming is sponsored in part by... The Vane Center, now celebrating 10 years service in Nashville, Tennessee. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Part two of Players Prep. I am Brad Hopkins alongside Jared Morris. We are brought to you by Global Motorsport, five locations in and around the Nashville area. Globalmotorsport.com is a place to go find out where those locations are. Joining us on the program from the Brentwood Academy Eagles is Cody White. Cody White, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Well, first off, I mean, I, let's talk about what you did against JP2 last week. Uh, 50 to 10 was the victory, but 309 yards on the ground and five touchdowns. Man, that's a that's a pretty convincing win for your ball club. Well, it was. It was good to get out there and get a senior night and get a lot of kids played. And, um, you know, it always makes for a good week when your kids have been out on the field some because uh, we had some blood bass before that when we were weren't able to get a lot of our subs in. So, yeah, it was nice to be able to do that and, and uh, finish the game well and, relatively healthy, so which is what we're going to need going into this week. Coach, talking about McCauley, they're undefeated this year. You're going there to a very hostile environment. Talk about what you have to do in your preparations to get ready for a hostile environment and for a tough team like McCauley. Well, I mean, you know, obviously we've got, a, uh, we've got a ball control option offense, so we've got to be uh, really, really disciplined defensively, uh, understanding assignments and you know, lining properly and all those things, and then <clears throat> I think you know, I think people see the scores in this league, and you know, I just uh, I think offenses are really really good right now, and uh, so you know maybe it's not holding people to points, but defense we got to get off off on third down as much as we can just to get the extra possessions, and then uh, you know that entails us being good offensively. We got to be able to put the ball in the end zone when we get a chance, and um, you know hopefully that'll that'll be the rest before hopefully get a couple turnovers those kind of things, but they're really good. Yeah, high-powered offense down in McCauley, led by um, Javon Craig, and of course, um, I think his name is Alex Trotter, a guy that pretty yeah. much, you know, for the way that they control the ground game, like you guys control the ground game, it, it, it might be just a battle of defenses, you know, basically keeping your offenses out of the end zone. Well, I mean, it could be, and you know, the thing about about them is when Alex clears the line of scrimmage, and we don't have anybody catching, so um, we got to do a good job of trying to turn him more, you know, east and west, and not let him go north and south on us, and. Um, you know, they just Rob does a good job with those guys. They do a good job with their staff and they scheme you well and uh, you know, we just gotta be really, really disciplined and really that's why I'm going. I mean that's the bottom line. Coach, what's the biggest matchup that you're looking for in this game? The one that really sets the tone for the game that you absolutely have to have to win to win this ball game? Well, I think the line of scrimmage both sides, I mean that's a kind of a standard answer most coaches will give you, but um, you know, if we can control line of scrimmage, then we'll be able to run the football. 
and then we got good enough receivers to hopefully get some big plays when that happens in the play action game. And um, you know, defensively, we've got to be able to stop the dive stuff and make everything go sideways as far as the option end goes. Cody White, the head coach of the Brentwood Academy Eagles, is joining us here on the program. And and Cody, uh, obviously, you're honored your your seniors on Friday night. Just talk about how much they've meant to you. I know that you see a senior class come every single season, but you know what makes this class a little bit more unique. Well, like I said, they're all different. Uh, this one, I, I just this is a really good group of solid kids. I mean, they're a lot of fun to be around. They come to work every day. Uh, don't have a lot of any drama with these guys at all. I mean, they just they get along together well. Uh, doing a good job mentoring the younger kids, and you know, we're just it's it, you know, there's you know, there's a lot of them that aren't starters, you know, and they they fill the role of scouting guys well, or you know, some competing with some special teams, and uh, you know, they're perfectly satisfied with being really good team guys, and that's what, you know, that's what you always look for in a class. Well, Cody, enjoy the bus ride. It gives you an opportunity to, to camaraderize a little bit with your with your team there as you get ready to kind of focus and get ready for what you know is going to be a tough ball game. We wish you luck in this upcoming weekend. Appreciate it, Cody. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Okay, have a great day. We'll see you. You too. Bye. All right, bye-bye. That was Cody White from the Brentwood Academy Eagles right there. They got a tough contest. I mean, I'm telling you what, when you talk about their ability to run the football, you're talking about Alex Trotter's speed. That is ridiculous speed. I saw it up close and personal when they played Ensworth mm -hmm. uh, a couple of few weeks back, and that Javon Craig guy, you know, at quarterback, uh, he really is, uh, I guess you could say, the, the third element of that triple threat that they have down there in McCauley. So mm -hmm. it'll be a great game to watch. Absolutely. Hey, listen, we've got more coming up in Players Prep, so stick around. Don't go anywhere. Tocopolis programming is sponsored in part by the Center for Advanced Dentistry, now serving the greater Nashville area. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The show is Players Prep. We are your hosts, Brad Hopkins, Maurice Patton, and Jared Morris. And that was Cody White, the head coach of the Brentwood Academy Eagles, talking with us about the upcoming game against McCauley. And, you know, I think this is going to be pretty interesting. It's almost a redemption game, if you will, for McCauley, because I don't know how you saw McCauley last year, but, you know, they've got to be thinking about vindicating themselves from that 39-16 to loss at the hands of the Eagles last year. How much improvement is there to this ball club from one year to the next? It, it's been it's been dramatic, apparently. Um, like you said, they lost to Brentwood Academy 39-16 over here, had some trouble with some turnovers, and, and I'm not sure that they played four quarters in that ball game. I think Ralph Potter has done a heck mm -hmm. of a job. Former Brentwood Academy coach Ralph Potter, by the way. So um, if you think that he doesn't have a little fire coming into this week, then um, then you'll probably be mistaken. But um, I think Macaulay has taken some significant steps um, from last year to this year, and we saw that a couple of weeks ago with what they did to Ensworth. And, and they are definitely going to be a factor in this um, Division II AA region over the next few weeks. Absolutely. Like you said, Macaulay, a very high-powered offense. They're going to be looking to score a lot of points against this Brentwood Academy team, and it's going to be one that is going to be a lot of fun to watch. And and while you say they're going to be looking to score a lot of points, they're going to. Brentwood <laughs> Academy has unfortunately shown an ability to give up a lot of mm -hmm. points. Um, again, going back to that 52-44 loss to um, to NBA a couple of weeks ago, they um, they beat Science Hill 45-42 not too long ago. So so. You've got a defense that can be scored on, and you've got an offense that can, can score. score. So, um, yeah. looking at the notes that I took, though, I, I will say this. I mean, obviously, you know Javon Craig and, and of course, um, uh, Alex Trotter are, are the, the horses for that offense. You know, the, the speed and the power that, you know, Ralph Potter has grown to rely on. But if you look at the distribution that B.A. has, you know, five different guys scored points for those guys. You know, matter of fact, uh, Jeremiah Oswell, the quarterback, he not only ran for a touchdown, he threw a few touchdowns. So they're obviously going to lean a lot on Prince Mamudu. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, J Jacob Creighton is another guy that obviously scored a touchdown last weekend against JP2 as they put up 50 points on those guys. So when we're talking about matching score for score, this might be one of those situations. It could definitely be one of those yeah, situations because, like you said, Jeremiah Oswell is continuing to come on as a sophomore. Yeah. They've got some guys they can hand it to with Mamadou, with, with Creighton, with um, Sean Lumpkin. And, um, I'm sorry, Sean Lumpkin, Sean Brashers, mm -hmm. and and a freshman at receiver, Cameron Johnson, who is really coming on for him. So um, they're very balanced on offense, and they can put up a lot of points as well. So it may it may kind of look like an arena ball game by the time it's over with. <laughs> that is obviously a game that we're we're featuring right here. Any other mm -hmm. games, Jared, that you've been paying attention to that we should be looking at for this upcoming weekend's high school action? 
Let's see. There's a lot of good ones to choose from. Yeah. Mo, you had a couple, didn't you? Uh, yeah. I, I had one in particular. It's a Thursday night game because we've got a lot of teams on fall, but schools on fall break this week and either playing Thursday night or not playing at all mm -hmm. this week. But um, Independence is at Centennial, big uh, big 11 AAA game. And um interested to see how Centennial bounces back after losing to Ravenwood last week, 24 nothing. Um Independence has got a loss to Ravenwood as well, so this is a game that's going to have some say so in how how eleven Triple A plays out the rest of the way. I think. Is it too early now to start talking about playoff scenario situations, teams that are rising to the top? You know, maybe some matchups that we we'll want to see in postseason play. Is it too early for that? You know, you've got six, seven games in pretty much across the board, and I think at this point, people are starting to play for district championships and, and postseason placements and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So I don't think it's too early at all. I, I think that kind of talk is definitely out there at this point. So, um, and this, like I said, this is a game, Franklin's still got to play both these teams, I believe. Mm -hmm. And they've got Ravenwood coming up as well. So, so there's a lot still undecided in that district, even as well as Ravenwood has played to this point. It's never too early for us to talk about playoffs, but it's always too early for the teams to think about playoffs. Yeah. So they got to finish out the season first, try to get some district championships under their belt for some of these teams, and then when the season's over, then you start thinking about the playoffs. But for us, we love talking about playoffs I early. will say this, though, because our game last week, I say our being Innsworth's game last week, was on a Thursday night. We talked about the Thursday night tilt that we should be watching this week. I think it's pretty cool to see players from other teams that may be there to quote unquote scout or even just be in oh, attendance yeah. to some of those ball games because NBA Innsworth is a, it's a rivalry in itself and to see kids from Brentwood Academy and Father Ryan and T just kind of walking around just kind of you know looking at what competition they might have for next week it's pretty fun you know especially when you have I guess it's split up like that between a couple of nights of high school football and I think it kind of lets you know how big the game is when you see a bunch of kids from Absolutely. other schools like that mm -hmm. coming out and just checking it out. Absolutely. Well, that's going to do it for another edition of Players Prep. Remember, we are brought to you by Global Motorsports. You can see them at globalmotorsportsinc.com on the internet. Jared, tell everybody how they can reach us on Facebook and interact during the week. The Facebook page is up and kicking, guys. Players Prep. Go and like it. Post videos, post photos, post questions. Anything you want up there, you can post, and we'll answer it, do whatever we can. Also, hit us up on Twitter. You can post us questions that way. I am at 97 Morse. Just search Brad Hopkins or Maurice Patton in the search bar, unless you want to put the underscore in there for P <laughs> underscore hop 72. So uh, that's the best way to find us, and Twitter's, Twitter's a great tool to get to us and Facebook of course go and like the page because it's going to be awesome it's going to get big and that's the best way to hit us up right now as a matter of fact for all you Facebook contributors go as, as soon as you can because you might see a video of Jared Morris twerking <laughs> that will be coming Let's to you soon put it up there yes, put it up there because he, <laughs> loves, the days. he loves that kind of attention hey <laughs> for Jared Morris and for Maurice Patton I am Brad Hopkins this has been Players Prep and brought to you by Global Motorsports we'll see you next week